your eyes. Wake up, lazy butts. Get out of bed. For real, you're probably late for something. It's time for another CMF series. Just in time for... Nothing, really. But hey, I'm back. This time the series is, by reading the title, you already know. The Legend of Zelda. Zelda is something that I've only recently become interested in, but the story is really fun and the characters are so unique that I knew I wanted to make a series based on it. I've made two Zelda figures already, Ocarina Link and Ganondorf. They were super fun to draw and made me want to make a full lineup, which is why this video now exists. Also, almost every character comes with a new piece. I know that's not incredibly realistic, but so many characters require new pieces that I didn't even try to stop it. But hey, it makes them look cool. And I guess I should now continue on with the minifigures. You can't have a Zelda series without the main character, Prince Zelda, obviously, so... <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Since Breath of the Wild is the newest game, Link has his champion's garb and comes with a quiver, a master sword, a Hylian shield, and a new hair and ears piece. That is not the last time I will say that. Okay, now here's Zelda. Like Link, she's in her champion's outfit from Breath of the Wild, which is one of her best designs, in my opinion. She has a new hair slash ears piece, but her accessories are a Sheikah Slate and a frog for Link's tasty consumption. Rounding out the Triforce is Calamity Ganon. If you've played Breath of the Wild, you will know that Calamity Ganon is not humanoid in the slightest. I had no idea how I would draw him until I saw this great art by one Simon Mackew. So, using that as the base, I was able to translate the Calamity pretty well. Even then, he's not a very standard figure. Using a new piece for his luscious question mark mane, a stud shooter arm, Ryo's double arms, the scorpion tail, and a peg leg. I've been told Tingle is a popular character, and that he should be included in this series. I hate Tingle, personally, so it hurt to draw him, but I'll live. He has a new hood, a brick built balloon backpack, say that five times fast, a brush, and a map tile of a certain landscape. Heroes need cannon fodder to brutally murder, and the Bokoblin fits that spot perfectly. Obviously, his head is a new piece, but he also uses mid-legs and comes with a club. Why have the Demon King when you can have the Demon Lord? Girahim appears as shiver-inducing as ever. He has a new hair slash ears piece with a sword, scarf, and special cape. It was also suggested that I give him his long tongue on the reverse side of his head. So I did. Regrettably. Ugh. In making this series, I wanted to include representatives from every major race. Princess Ruto represents the Zora. Her weird fish head is obviously a new piece, but I was able to use Storm's cape for her... Flippers? Fins? Wings? Is that what evolved into the Rito? And her accessory is the Water Medallion. For the Gerudo, we have Naburu, Sage of Spirit. She's a comparatively simple figure, but the Gerudo detailing turned out great. Her accessory, like Ruto's, is a medallion, this time being of spirit. I don't like Rivali, but the Rito needed an appearance, and because you wouldn't hear me say a negative word about anyone, he's included. Anyway, the ravioli bird here doesn't use any new pieces because he's not special enough. Mr. Cuckoo for no-show bluffs uses a Chima Phoenix's head, Jafar's armor, fawn legs, and a bow and arrow. Daruk is way better than Rivali, and he's the representative of the Gorons. He may look foreign, but he's not. The spiky hair is a new piece, but everything else is existing. I wanted to give him the necessary bulk, but I've been avoiding the Mr. Incredible body like the plague. So I used Haggard's body, and it turned out great. Daruk's giant weapon is really hard to capture, and I know that Garmadon's axe isn't a great replica, but it looks Goron-like, so I'm fine with it. Majora's Mask is one of the most well-loved Zelda games, with the mask itself being very iconic. Because of that, Skull Kid had a spot here from the beginning. The mask is, of course, a new piece, which snaps onto Skull Kid's hat, which is also new. Remove the mask and you get the imp himself, he also comes with two recolors of the Golden Snitch piece, representing his partners in crime, Tattle and Tail. Wait a second. Those combined make Tattle Tail. Why am I only just now getting that? The remake of Link's Awakening was just released, so it seemed appropriate to include Marin. She's a simple figure, but again, she works. 
She has wavy hair with a flower in the side, a skirt, and a new piece for her harp. Halloween has come and gone, but the spooks are here year round. The Redead is included for his spoopiness, and yes, the fact that he would be relatively easy to make. He uses Iron Man's helmet in dark orange with that terrifying grin showing through. I didn't want to include only console characters, so Vati seemed like a good fit. His ears, hood, hair, whatever you want to call it, thing is a new piece, with a cape, mid legs, and a power blast to fire at the princess. The second version of Link to be included is technically the Link from The Link to the Past. What do I mean by technically? Well, he's sort of a mishmash of Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, and Link Between Worlds, making this handsome fella all mashed together. This way, you'd be able to make him have adventures with Zelda and Marin, depending on who you ship. His hood slash hair is new, and he comes with a sword and shield. Speaking of Zelda, she follows Link, also in her Link to the Past slash Between Worlds design. If you've noticed, I've now made all of the main characters in their Smash Ultimate outfits. Ganondorf from Ocarina, Link from Breath of the Wild, and now Zelda. She uses a new hair slash earpiece and comes with a cape, dress, and a fairy bottle. We've had the force of nature, so why not include the genius in Link to the Past Ganon? Honestly, I think he looks fantastic. He has a new pig head piece, orc shoulder armor, a cape, and a trident. All he needs now is some sages to kidnap, slash kill, or whatever, and he'll be perfect. The last Link is Toon Link, a worthy inclusion. If you noticed, Vati and Toon Link use the same hair slash hood piece, which I think works great for both of them. Because the other two Links have swords and shields, I thought I'd change it up and give Link this other iconic weapon, the Hookshot, ready for a swinging action. Toon Zelda's next. Hopefully you're seeing a pattern by now. Toon Zelda is a great, colorful design and one of the most fun to draw. New hairpiece, obviously, but also a light bow to help defeat... Toon Ganondorf, obviously. The last figure in the series was, again, super fun to make. Overall, I found the Toon designs to be the most interesting. If, you know, a lot simpler. No new pieces here. He uses the Wealth Doctor's hair in orange, the arm capes from Cinder, and two swords with tassels. Hiya! This series was, seriously, really enjoyable. With super colorful characters, the differences from all the game designs, and how interesting I find the world of Hyrule and beyond, it was one of the most fun I've had with a single series. And I think it's overall one of my best. Also, Special thanks to Meerkat from RSG, who helped come up with the character list. For the packaging, I decided to go with the Sheikah Slate design with runes, for Sheikah runes. Same with the layout, which uses the same slate background. That is, all 20. Now, I am aware that there are some characters that you think might be missing. Some of those might include Sheik, Impa, another version of Link, Zelda, or Ganondorf, and King Harkinian, obviously. Believe me, those were remembered. But hey, with such important characters missing, this leaves room for a Series 2. And with how fun this one was, a Series 2 is probably an inevitability in the future. But this might be the only CMF series in November. Obviously, I'll be here with my usual stuff. I'm really trying with the Resistance recaps, I promise. And I have something super big planned for December, minifigure-wise. If you know what big release is in December, you can probably guess the subject. But until then, later.